Hi, welcome to the life of a Latina engineer. So I realized I've been gone, not recording videos lately, and then I also realized that the semester is about to start for those of you that are still in school. So I'm gonna try my best to do how to get ready for the semester that's coming up, especially because now we're going virtually apparently everywhere. And that is just a big challenge, especially if, like if I had to go through that, it's like I, I am a fan of printed papers, written notes, and you know, it's difficult. So we have to prepare for it and we have to be ready so that we can give our best to our classes. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go over how to prepare to get the most out of this semester that is coming up. So what will be the first thing that I will do now that we know that all our learning and all our homework and all of the education is gonna happen remotely? I will make sure that I have an area where, where I could work at that I know it's meant for that sole purpose. So there's a couple things behind this. For example, the first one is that once you have that area and you know that area is designated for you to study, for you to do your homework, your brain will be trained to know that it needs to focus there and it is a place where once you're in, you have to work. And that's gonna help you a lot to get in the mentality that you know once you're sitting there, it's work time. And if you're gonna do something that it's you know fun, that you're gonna watch YouTube videos, that you're gonna be going on Instagram, then you leave that place and you do it somewhere else. So the main things that you need are obviously a flat space, a table. And you don't have to go out and buy a desk and buy a monitor and buy a printer and buy a new computer for this. You just need to know where you're gonna sit at. When I was living at home, I had my own desk, but before I was able to have my own desk, I would be in the basement and just a random table that we had. And just because it was quieter and I could focus and I didn't have my siblings or my dog just running around and, you know, trying to distract you. And then before then, I would just sit down on the dining table. And this is where my parents also helped me out a lot because they knew that that was the only place I had where I had enough space to spread out to have my computer, to have my book, to have my notes and that I could work on. You know, we had to collaborate. My siblings, they were younger and they had to understand that, you know, I was doing homework, so they might leave to a different room. That way we had that where I could focus, I had my work area, and I didn't have to worry about all these other things happening at the same time. Okay, now that we have that settled, uh, let's move into getting ready for the actual class. So looking at your syllabus, looking at what you're gonna need, looking at what classes you're taking. And I know some professors might not tell you everything before you start class. I know I am one that likes to be ready before the class starts. I want to look at the schedule. I want to look at what books I need, if I need them, and just all the information that I can about the course. So it was difficult when the professors wouldn't upload the syllabus until we started, or they would literally hand us out a paper copy when we start a class and you know by then it's like you're giving me a week to find the book and sometimes that's challenging too so if you have that if you if your professors are really being prepared and want to help you or put in the syllabus out there then and even if they're not try to reach out to them and tell them what am i going to need because the last thing i want is the first week i get this five different syllabus with five different dates with five different books that i have to find and see if i can find online if i can buy them or if i can rent them and that just adds stress to the first week of classes so if you can look at the syllabus first first look at the dates the important dates so when are your midterms where are your exams where are any big projects that you might have and write those down whether it is on your planner or whether you have a calendar that you put on your wall or your phone or whichever works for you make sure you have those dates written somewhere that is going to remind you later the other important thing from syllabus are the books so if you are looking at them ahead of time like a week maybe two weeks before the class starts then you can go and either, read, either reach out to your friends who are also in engineering classes, see if they have their books, if they have PDFs. Uh, other students that you might know from clubs or whatnot that might be a semester ahead that might also have those books that they can send you and that way you don't have to rent them or buy them, especially if it's not clear in the syllabus if you need it or not. Because the last thing you want is showing up to the class or starting your online class and then them telling that you don't need it. Because then you wasted the money or you rent it already and the money is not going to come back. So here PDFs are really important because if you can find them or someone else, they're literally just going to send you a file. But also, since you're going to be virtually this semester, it's going to be way easier to just have that copy and then just have it along with everything else rather than having an actual book in front of you. Unless that is the best way that you can learn. And something that goes along with this, like I mentioned, how PDFs will be easier to have for your books is knowing how you want to be organized for the rest of the semester. 
So your classes might be online, there might be Zoom calls, there might be pre-recorded classes, but that does not mean that everything else that you do has to also be electronically. So there are two ways that I would organize myself if I was starting my semester. And the first one would be with a folder. So I would buy a big folder or I would buy not, actually not true. I would buy a small folder, a half an inch folder. And well, this was because I used to go to school and I didn't want to carry a big folder. So I would get a small folder and make a tab for each class. In each section, I would have like a pocket where I could put all the hands out that we would get. And then the rest would be just loose leaf paper that I could write on. And then once we were done with the section, or like we were done with the test for that section, I would move all that section for the class into its own folder that was for like thermodynamics or fluids. And that one would start growing. And then I would start a new section because I knew the test wasn't going to cover the before, but it was only going to start like, you know, again, while the other ones continue. So each one had kind of like their own time, but I would pass it into a different folder. But that kept me sane because I knew I had everything I needed for classes together and I wasn't struggling that I forgot my notebook somewhere. Again, we are not going to have this issue this time, but it was a good way to know that everything was together where I needed it to be. And organization is extremely important for when you're going to come into a test because that way I knew that only that content was the one covering that test and I know where to find the homeworks, I knew where to find the syllabus, I knew where to find the notes. It was all organized within its own tab. So it was typically a syllabus and then hands out and then homeworks like, and then notes. And I will use whatever I needed for the test. The other thing is you can do electronically. So I have my own hard drive where I will make a folder for the school and then a folder for the semester and then a folder for each class. And there I will do the same organization I did in my folder, I will do it there. And there's actually more to that that I want to make a video about is how to stay organized electronically just to keep saying and to know where everything is, even as you go back like semesters later or you know a whole year later, like so stay tuned for next week because that's going to be the topic. The next thing is to find a place for everything. So find a place where you're going to have your books, your notes and everything. And then find a place where your computer is going to be sitting at. Find a place for where your headphones are going to be at, where your calculator is going to be at because you won't have everything in a backpack anymore where you just take it to school and come back. And also you want to know where it is for when you need it. So if you have a test that's coming up in 30 minutes, you don't want to spend those 30 minutes looking for your calculator because you don't remember if you were studying in the basement or in the living room or in your bedroom or in your siblings bedroom or if you went somewhere to like to a park to study like and you might be laying in your car. So it's good to have a place where everything is going to be at so that you need it. So if your siblings are running around and you need headphones, you know where those headphones are You just put them on and you don't waste any time trying to find them and lastly is to have a study schedule and this is gonna vary depending on how your classes are given so some people might have classes that are pre-record that are pre-recorded and that you can listen to whenever you want others might have live classes where you are only able to see it once and then it's kind of gone so you need to take notes and pay attention so it's gonna depend on how your classes are gonna be ran and also depending on your professors because you might have some classes one way and some classes the other way so figure out how your classes are gonna be run and try to create a schedule from there since when I was in school or classes were in person I knew that they were always meeting at a certain time and from there I also knew that typically they assign homeworks on Tuesdays and they would do until the following Tuesday or on Thursday and they would do on Thursday so I knew what afternoons or what days I needed to work on those specific homeworks so being that said I will lay out a calendar from either Monday to Friday or Sunday to Saturday depending if you want to also cover those depending if you want to include the weekend and I will put the classes I needed to be in and then I would also put the time that I needed to study or work on homework. So I had those predetermined and I knew what afternoons I, had, I was going to stay later working and what afternoons I was a little bit more free to do something else. So that you're not constantly worrying about having to do homework or having to study and you know when you're gonna be working on. It, it brings you some level of like stress relief because you know you have your schedule. So that helps out a lot to know when you're taking your breaks, when you're going out for a coffee, when you have an afternoon free to go out. Well, maybe not to go out, but you know, to spend it with your family or to have a call with your friends. So try to make that schedule and see what times work best for you. Maybe you wanna study at night and be free in the mornings. Maybe you wanna study in the mornings and be free in the afternoon or maybe in the middle of the day. Make what works best for you and then you try to stick to that schedule. 
it will give it a little bit more order into this hectic world that everything is in the computer. So I hope those tips help you now that we're starting the semester. I hope you start the semester strong and know that if it might look difficult, it might feel really complicated because everything is changing and we don't have, you know, or classmates that are going to be in classroom that we can talk, that we can meet to do homeworks. Know that if you put the hard work, you're going to get through it. And we're in an era where you're learning how to do everything virtually now, like your classes completely virtually is a different change, but your professors are also going through that change. So definitely even if some expectations you feel like are unfair or it's just too much to take in Talk to your professors. They're gonna understand. They're going through this together with you They're trying to run a classroom from a computer. They have to record. They have to give assignments Know that it's a change for both you and the professors and that only with communication you're gonna keep this class Going and you're gonna make everyone feel like you're getting the best out of it so my best wishes to all of you that are starting this semester electronically. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much. Bye!